What's up, guys? This is Mark, the president of Studio 346, and we're here for Q&A episode number two. That's right. We're going to do more than one of these, of course. We're going to be answering questions from our patrons over on Patreon. If you're a patron, thank you so much for your support. And if you're not, make sure you check the link in the description for details about the Patreon and how to sign up. You may get extra content and as well, everything that we post publicly a month early. So make sure you check that out. But with that, we're going to be answering patron questions, but also showing off some things that we forgot to show off in the demo showcase. There's so many fun, nuanced little features that we actually forgot to show them all off. So let's get into it, shall we? Here we sit inside the cab of our Baldwin 10-26D. 10-wheeler, model off of the South Pacific Coast locomotives. This locomotive is equipped with A1 automatic brakes, and that's the only brake it has. It actually doesn't have an independent brake, which is quite strange, but South Pacific Coast for you. And as such, we didn't really show off the brakes other than the fact that you needed to take it off. And so right now you can see we're in emergency. We've got the brake pipe dumped. That's at zero PSI in our main reservoir is hovering right around 90 as the locomotive leaks and various things. You hear the pump cycle once in a while and it brings us back to 90. You'll also note that this being an older locomotive based on South Pacific Coast 20 from the late 1800s, it has an old style lubricator that is very inconveniently in the way of our view of the pressure gauges, which is why we have multiple camera views while you're still attached to the seat. So I'm currently attached to the engineer's seat, and as I cycle through buttons one through five, I can sit in the seat, I can have my head out the window, I can be in the gangway and easily see the gauges and everything else. I can be out on the running board, easily seeing everything without any obstruction and easily turning on the dynamo. And as well, we have the get back in the cab before you die position. These seats are also mirrored for the fireman's side. Now, about that air system. It actually reacts as an entire dynamic system with a brake pipe, the air compressor, and main reservoir all modeled. So right now, we're dumped in emergency, and assuming that we need to use enough main reservoir to actually kick things off here, I'm going to reset the air here by going to run. You hear it release, you see the brake pipe slowly come up to 70, and we used a fair amount of main reservoir pressure to recharge that brake pipe. So the pump has to catch up to bring us back to that 90 PSI main reservoir. We can also take service applications, as you would with a G6 automatic. Bring it over to service, it reduces the brake pipe. Take as much of a set as you want, and we can lap it. So we hold that set, retain that set on the brakes, and then we can bring it back to run to bring it back to our operating brake pressure. And you can see we didn't use that much air because we didn't reduce it all the way. So we didn't actually use enough of our main reservoir to cause the pump to cycle a whole bunch. But what we can also do is we can overcharge the system by going to release or overcharge, which forces the main reservoir and brake pipe to become one. So you'll watch the brake pipe chase the main reservoir around. It's a really neat system, and we're excited for folks who want to play with a full air brake simulation to be able to do that with the proper air brakes properly simulated per locomotive. But fret not, if this is scary and air brakes sound weird and you're uncomfortable with that and you just want to be able to run trains, you won't have to worry about it either. So don't worry too much. Now let's get to the questions, shall we? Joining me today for the Q&A portion of this episode is fellow Century of Steam developer, Jake. Say hello. Hey, how's it going? Jake, could you tell the folks what you do on the project? Give a little intro. So I do basically everything physics related. So everything you see relating to the trains, moving along the track, pulling stuff, uh, even everything that's going on with the character, that's all me. Um, I get a lot of help, but yeah, that is really where uh, my work is focused. Just a casual, I don't know, important thing for a game that involves trains. Yes. <laughs> we love the work that you do, and uh, I'm glad that you're able to join me for this Q&A today. Uh, I'm with, glad to be here. With that all said, let's get into it. So these are questions from our patrons over on Patreon. Uh, first one is from Wide Brim Wizard. Is that the Doppler effect? Uh, yes, that is the Doppler effect. And if you're not familiar with, with the Doppler effect, what it is is actually when something is approaching you at high speed, 
the uh, the pitch changes as it gets closer and closer to you because the distance is closing and the speed of sound is so slow relative to the distance. So the uh, the pitch will sound like something's higher pitched as it's coming towards you and then lower pitched when it's running away. And uh, yes, we've simulated that because it's very important when a fast moving train whizzes by you. Uh, it's definitely something you experience at crossings. Mega Mikey 75 asks, I really love the list of whistles that are currently in the build. Although I will ask, will there be some maps based on some of the Midwest or East Coast narrow gauge railroads? As cool as the list is, some might find it strange to hear a whistle belonging to an East Coast railroad on a locomotive operating on a West Coast railroad or vice versa. Or probably not if it was a common practice in the context of the late 1800s. So my, my two cents on this is back in the early days, engineers did tend to have their own assigned power and did tend to have their own whistles in some cases. But with that said, we absolutely want to represent a comprehensive story of narrow gauge railroading in America. And one does not do that without representing the Midwest and the East and the Appalachias and all of those locations. So uh, there will be a flavor of that to come in the future. Hobo says, the simulation side of things really surprised me. I've only ever seen maybe two or so games even try to simulate the ins and outs of oil firing. I know this is a simplified mode to make it easier for people at the convention, but will the more complex mode have things like steam chest pressure and other little things like that simulated? It may already be in this demo. There was no gauge to indicate anything, so sorry if it's a pointless question. But if so, how detailed are you guys willing to make the aspects of running steam? Again, this looks incredible. So the one thing I do want to note in the demo uh, is that the firing and the actual running of the train were completely disconnected. Uh, basically, all firing did was change the color of the stack, and we did, or we, we as if I had a part of that, Mark and I think Dan helped a lot with that. Uh, what Mark and Dan did a lot of was making sure that the stack actually reacts realistically, so when it goes black, it really should be going black. Whatever you do to make the stack clean up is what you really should do in real life. Um, unfortunately, the Steam simulation model wasn't quite ready enough for my liking in time for the demo and we also just wanted people to be able to hop in and run trains but so yeah so the boiler pressure uh in the 10 2060 i think was like a constant 160 psi and there was just a like really simple model for how we turn that into tractive force uh there is a completely brand new model on the way that is going to be much more realistic i've had to do a ton a ton a ton a ton of research to even think about how I want to do that, and I have some really cool ideas that uh, I can't share, because if I told you, I'd have to kill you. Pretty but, much. Um, but believe me, there is a lot coming on my end. All I can say is that at the Narrow Gauge convention, I was able to get both Jake and Tristan, another fellow developer, in the cab of the 491, and as it did things, I just would turn around and go, we need to make it do that! <laughs> yes. And everyone agreed. So uh, we can fully say that, yes, we want an advanced Steam Sim. We want to make it feel like it does the thing. We want it to feel and act like it's a real Steam locomotive if you want that experience. We know plenty of people are going to want to just run through the scenery, have fun with friends, not have to sweat about dealing with an oil fire or or deal with exactly perfect train handling and all that mumbo jumbo, and they just want to make money with their business side of things. Uh, and that experience will be there too. But if you want to fight that locomotive up the grade and do it and have to deal with power strokes and all the things and, and a fire that actually makes it happen, that's what we're shooting for. Jack Fra asks, looks great. How did you guys pull off so much in such a short period of time? We didn't. <laughs> yeah. It took like almost two years to get to the point of the demo. And there's still so much more we have to do. Well, 15 months. But uh, yeah, <laughs> it feels like two years for sure. Um, lots of energy drinks, uh, lots of late nights, and uh, a really dedicated team. <laughs> late nights and late nights into early mornings into late mornings sometimes we will not discuss how much sleep tristan jake and i got during the convention while making sure that the new builds were done we will not discuss that it's fine yeah people 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 caught me nodding off at the booth and it was a little embarrassing but that's how tired i was yeah that's uh yeah that's reasonable <laughs> rudolph hijink asks it looks great will it be possible to drive using the keyboard as well 
Always love to enjoy what is around me, and therefore I like to control an engine from outside the cab. Oh, yes, we are planning on having you be able to control the locomotive with the keyboard from outside the cab. Um, there are just plenty of circumstances where you would want to do that, even if you're still in the cab. Like if you're looking backwards for a shove, obviously you, you can't manipulate the throttle if you're looking backwards. So yeah, keyboard, keyboard controls, yes. Yeah, an absolute must because, yeah, like you said, if you're if you're on a shove, uh, in real life you can have your hands on things and move things while you're looking somewhere else. In video games, if you're tied to the mouse, you can't do that. So absolutely, Joseph Darby, this is pure awesome. I love the detail on not just the locomotives and cars, but also the surrounding environment. Now, where is that pesky tech tree? Doesn't exist. We don't have one. We're not using a tech tree. We have a new system that we'll be going into detail on about uh, down the road, and it's going to be much more representative of what the railroads really would have experienced when they went to purchase locomotives, because that's what we really want to be able to do with this, is tell the history side and get people to be educated on some of the details of that sort of thing, and so that you can really get an overall feel of what things were like. Uh, as far as a list of locomotives, of course, uh, everyone always wants to know. And as we have more to show, we will show you more. But for now, we're going to keep that internal because uh, uh, we're very opinionated, narrow gauge nerds. And we continuously uh, change our minds on this locomotive, that locomotive uh, for the stuff that's not already in development. So <laughs> Quark Qatar asks, nice work, guys. If I see it correctly, the steam seems to sit stay relative to the locomotive, not to the environment. Uh, I'm not 100% certain what you mean there. The steam and everything spawns with the locomotive. It's It comes with the locomotive, but then it does interact with the environment. It will bounce off of the, uh, the roofs of tunnels. It gets blown around by wind. It does all that, and it's affected by speed. Oops, I derailed the Q&A because I've got a couple more features I want to show you. Don't worry, we'll get to the rest of the questions in a bit. Now, on the firing side of things, we forgot a couple important details, one of which is the blower. You can see right now we've got a real light haze coming out the stack from the amount of oil we're using, and it's being taken away by the wind. As we bring the oil up, it starts getting darker and darker, and... We're trying to generate more pressure rather than anything else. So we have a blower valve. We can turn the blower up, get it rolling, and start to actually force a little bit of draft out the stack. Of course, you're going to have to make all of your other controls match with the oil burner, make things happy. you got to match the draft and the amount of fuel you're putting out. But you have to get air moving through the fire in order to make pressure. So that's all simulated. Additionally, we also have injectors modeled, and they do some pretty cool things, and very few people even found them in the demo, which was kind of fun to see. So as you bring the injector on, the start, it blows a little steam, it's a little mad. So you bring it up some more, it'll start to spit water out the overflow pipe. And then you, the injector picks up, and it starts putting water in the boiler. And you can hear that sound all the way along the delivery line. And you shut it off and it puts everything away, stops putting water away. And when your engine's in good condition, nothing leaks out the overflow. That won't last for long. <laughs> Matthew Lowry, loved seeing this demo. Sad that you couldn't make to the convention to experience it in person. I do have a question, however. When at the end the locomotive derailed, the front truck came separated from the locomotive. Does this mean that we'll have dynamic damage in derailments? To what extent, if you have the liberty to tell us, will these damages go? And when re-railing, will these parts come back with the locomotive, or will we have to re-rail each part separately and piece them back together, slash drag the engine back to a shop complex to reassemble and repair? So the the pilot truck coming off the locomotive, I already talked about this in Discord, is actually like halfway between a feature and a bug. It should happen for some things, like the trucks on freight cars, should be a lot less likely to happen to the pilot truck on a steam locomotive because you have swing links physically holding the truck to the locomotive. Um, and just, it, it's a simple misconfiguration on the case of the locomotive, but people thought it was funny. They found it amusing. It didn't break anything. So out of all the things that had to be fixed on the demo, that was like bottom priority. As far as dynamic damage goes, uh, I don't know that we have anything planned as far as like wrecking the locomotive. Um, 
that's just a whole system that we haven't had time to think about. I think it'd be really cool. But um, I think Mark has a little something to say about damage from wear and tear that you might want to know about. D- damage from wear and tear, uh, including derailments, is definitely going to be a thing. Uh, we want to make sure that there is a simulation of having to perform maintenance on locomotives and cars and track and all that. Uh, and when I say that, we also have plans to make sure that that's not just absolutely tedium when you're talking about hundreds of train cars or miles and miles of railroad track. Uh, so the maintenance might be a little bit more specific on locomotives and a lot more broad uh, in terms of the more broader scope of things that you have a lot of. More to come on that later, of course. As far as re-railing, uh, there's some things that are fun to simulate and there's some things that uh, become painfully interactive and i would say that uh, re-railing each truck and then trying to get cars lined up and bolster pins and stuff leave that for the uh, the pros at holcher that have to re-rail real train derailments i don't know if that has any space in uh, in our game so i think uh, we'll find a nice way to get things re-railed nice and easy Thomas Summy asks, if there is a Patreon tier in the future that has us have access to the demo level shown here, you'd absolutely upgrade in a heartbeat. Well, I appreciate the sentiment, but there's there's no real good way for us to securely distribute the demo at this time. So there's not we're not going to make an extra tier uh, so folks can play it. We were thankful that so many people could come out and try it at the convention, and perhaps there will be another chance and opportunity for that in the future. More to come on that sort of thing, and and if there is something to come on that front, we will let you know as soon as we can. But uh, we have no plans to distribute it right now. Just because there's not really a logistically sound way for us to do that. Lego Kid 900 is the chuffing a sample of number 20. Looks great so far, guys. Uh, yes, the the chuffs on the 1026D are from 20. Uh, we have actual actually several sets of chuffs from several different locomotives with uh, lots of fun little tweaks and things. So uh, don't worry, not every engine's going to sound exactly the same because uh, not every engine sounds the same. So uh, I've gone through a fair amount of pain to make that many sound files. So uh, hopefully you all enjoy it. Andy Sapp asks, will there be seasons in the game? The trailer shows us a scene where there is snow. We can confirm that there's definitely going to be snow and snow fighting, and the snow fighting will actually require you to clear the track. And clearing the track will actually require serious force to push. Like, the snow is going to resist the trains, and does, and did in the trailer. Um... That said, will there be dynamic seasons and weather? That's still kind of TBD. We will we'll get there. Uh, but you will certainly run into snow uh, when appropriate on a maps where it makes sense at the very least. Carson, this game looks so good. And it looks like it could release right now. What's wrong with it? Ha, 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 ha. We appreciate the love. And we love that you think it looks uh, like it's ready to release right now. But it's uh, it's missing a lot of bits. There's uh, a there's a l- there's there's a lot of bits still there l- uh, like the game. Uh, right now we have a train that's really pretty and it does a lot of cool things, uh, and you can pick up cars and set out cars and and it's all very dynamic and it looks very nice and uh, and we're really excited about it. But uh, yeah, you you can't move cargo yet. We're working yeah. on that sort of thing. <laughs> <laughs> Zoe Milk Elroy, as detailed as ever, guys, looks amazing. My poor laptop is shaking at the idea of trying to render this. I'm curious if the cars and ships move or are just static props. Either way, this game is going to be amazing no matter how many times my PC catches fire trying to run. Uh, optimization is everyone's friend, and we're always looking at ways to improve performance while keeping things looking pretty. So uh, more to come on that front and system requirements down the road and all that. But I will tell you that the, the ships do move. We did make the ships move, and uh, we'll, we'll see if we make anything else move. You know, anything to make the environment feel more lively is definitely important because uh, I, I think we all have the pet peeve of playing a railroad game, and it just feels like you're the only living thing in the entire universe. Despite how uh, impressive or beautiful the landscapes may be, uh, if there's nothing else going on, no wildlife, no cars, no nothing, uh, it feels a little dead. So we uh, we definitely want to try and reverse that trend. Yeah, it's a very eerie, almost creepy feeling. 
yeah, it leaves you at the, the same kind of uh, scary Half-Life feeling of, look, there's all these background sounds, but there's actually nothing. OogleFluffG857 says, looks amazing. Can you say if there'll be key bindings available for the throttle and regulator? Being able to use your flight sim throttle quadrant would be awesome. Uh, as we discussed a little bit earlier in the video, yes, we want to have key binds for those sorts of things. As far as uh, external controller support and that sort of stuff, uh, that's uh, that's something that's on the roadmap for us to look into when we get there. <laughs> yeah, that includes accessibility options as well for people who might need them. Algae 4 I'm curious, will the intent be to lay your own track between various towns and industries, similar to Railroads Online, or is it primarily operation-based fixed line with opportunities for growth? So our intent is to have a little bit of both depending on how you want to play. We recognize that there are those of us who are named Heiss who suck at laying track and don't necessarily want to lay track, or maybe they just like laying bad track. But either way, if you don't want to lay track, we don't want to have to make you lay track. But if you want to lay track and you want to build your own railroad lock, stock, and barrel, we want you to have both options. So there's going to be something out there for anyone. If you want to build the whole thing yourself, go for it. If you want to just run trains, go for it. If you want to run trains and feel like you're still getting a progression and pay to unlock chunks of rail line as you make more money, but not have to build the track, we want all of those experiences to be available for you guys because we recognize everyone has a different touchstone with railroading and, and has a different desire with what they want out of the game. And so we want to try and represent that the best we can. Ten Shine One Productions, is there going to be third person controls as well or an option to simplify the oil firing controls? As we've said, definitely keyboard controls that you'll be able to use in third person views and, and all sorts of things outside the cab. Uh, and will there be an option to simplify the oil fire controls? Absolutely. Uh, there's going to be options for even not having to fire because some people are going to be playing single player and running and firing at the same time is really challenging. There's a reason we have two person crews uh, on a steam locomotive always still. So uh, we're definitely not going to expect players to have to do both. Wasatch Wind, absolutely love what I'm seeing, pretty much all of it. A question, though, not necessarily a criticism. The chuffing sounds weird to you. It's uh, not that I'm familiar enough with this type of locomotive to know it was in fact sound like that, or is it something like the audio engine has limits slash is still being worked on? I know that our perceptions of how things are supposed to be can often be wrong. Uh, there are some oddities with the chuffing. Uh, I'm still working on all that stuff, and I will tell you that uh, pretty much everything that we've done, we've probably done two or three times over, because we'll go through it one way, get it pretty good, and come back to it and go, you know, we could make this a little better. Uh, and that's not to say that we're stuck in a perfectionism loophole, but we know that things aren't quite where we want them to be, and we can definitely tweak them to get them as reasonable and good as we can. And uh, particularly chuffing at high speed is a really challenging thing to get right, uh, and I'm still definitely working on that. That said, at, at slow speeds, uh, that's pretty much what this sort of locomotive would sound like. So uh, I'll take a, a little 50-50 there. Yes and no. The Undead Hooligan, I know that you've said about specific locomotives, but you have to know, are there any articulated locomotives planned? J Jake, do we have any big choo-choos planned? Several. We, we, we like the big choo-choos. We, we want... We want the big choo-choos. Trust me. Bullhead JW, are the maps going to be pre-generated or procedural? Maps and all of their fun details will be coming down the road and more will be coming on that. So please stay tuned. We'll get to your questions on maps and all of those sorts of things in the coming future here. Carlac 2682 are we going to find out what all those barrels that say fire and look like they will explode do soon? Uh, they do look like the uh, Donkey Kong sort of MacGuffin red barrel that blows up if you accidentally damage it. That's very true, but uh, they're actually a realistic prototype from any sort of wooden trestle or bridge on the railroad where you have to have fire prevention barrels out there so that you can help put out a fire in the event that, uh, you know, the locomotive that shoots Bernie things from its uh, stack has something to say about the fact that there's a bridge here. Uh, so they're definitely an ornament more so than a, an explosive barrel in our case. Helsing 80H says, well, that's an awesome demo. Well done, guys. Question, the 10 wheeler you ran, is that an oil burner from the factory? And Heist, could you maybe do a video on the subject? 
well, I appreciate you think that uh, I'm very knowledgeable about this, but I had to uh, ping my fellow developer, Daniel Gallery, who maybe we'll get on for one of these Q&As as well. He's one of our 3D modelers and historians as well. Uh, Daniel made the model of the 10-wheeler, South Pacific Coast 20 as the prototype, and no, it was a coal burner from the factory and was later modernized to burn oil, which is why you saw the modernized version with the headlight, the electric generator, all that stuff, because uh, we wanted to show off a little bit of the modern flavor. Anyways, guys, we hope you enjoyed this Q&A portion of the video, and again, thank you for joining me, Jake. Absolutely. Have a good one. Whoops, I derailed it again. I guess I've got a habit for doing that sort of thing, don't I? <laughs> well, I guess I'll just have to show you a couple more features that we forgot to show before we get out of here. One thing that we did forget to show is one of the other important warning devices. So let's get this train moving, shall we? And uh, we'll feature the Illinois Central 3 chime on this one. All right, we're starting to walk away from the station, but we need a little ding-ding action too. And we have both the immersion, I want to be a fireman and ding the bell cord. And we also have an automatic ringer on the UI. So if you don't want to have to ring the bell, you don't have to. Now, as night falls, we also need to discuss the options about the headlight. We got the dynamo running. As we jump in the cab, we do have overhead order lights for both the engineer and for the fireman. And as we discussed in the demo showcase video, the South Pacific Coast engines were interesting in that the fireman had all the headlight controls. First, you go to dim by going up with the knife switch, and dim casts a little bit of a light and lets everyone know that you're there, but it's not super blinding from far away. And when you go to the full beam, and you really hear the dynamo load down, you can actually see what the heck's going on ahead of you, and it's pretty blinding to stare directly into. These also exist for our backup light for locomotives so equipped. Both a dim and a full beam. We hope you liked this little additional look at some of the demo things and, of course, the patron Q&A. Remember, if you want to join our Patreon, the link's down in the description below. Huge thanks to our patrons, of course. And, you know, if you join, maybe your question will get answered next, too. Thanks so much for watching, guys. We will catch you all next time.